So we saw the, uh, the the sort of topology, if you will, the layout of, of, of a uh, eucalyptus space cloud. That's right. Cloud. One one of the possible reference architecture, possible sure. layouts. Yes. And and so this what we're seeing now is sort of the uh, the first encounter a user might have with with, with a cloud. <coughs> this is the uh, the administrative interface that gets exposed to a cloud administrator. Once you have deployed a eucalyptus cloud, the administrator begins configuring the cloud and managing the users by logging into this administrative interface. So once logged in, you can modify your credentials or you can modify your uh, account information, you can download your cryptographic credentials. You know, these are the cryptographic credentials that are generated by Eucalyptus for uh, all of the users, including the administrator, and the X.509 certificates, just like you have the certificates in Amazon EC2, we, we generate those certificates for every user. And for all of the tools that utilize the query interface, we also provide the query ID and the secret key. So you can quickly download it and use it as part of your uh, end user tools. You can manage all of your images. So you have an image catalog that Eucalyptus can, uh, uh, that administrators can expose to their end users so that end users can choose from one among these image images from the catalog and spin up a virtual machine in an on-demand basis via a self-service provisioning interface. And as an administrator, you will also be able to manage your users. So you can add users to the cloud, you can import users from an existing LDAP or Active Directory, uh, you can import group information, and, uh, and associate a notion of grouping on top of these users, say, some of your users might belong to uh, different customers. You know, they might be different customers using your cloud, or they might be users belonging to different groups like sales, marketing, engineering, R&D. So you can specify those groups, and you can go a step further and associate certain quotas for each of these groups, saying this group is uh, entitled to utilize resource from this only, res this only this resource pool. So that way you have some certain constraints on how much resource right. a particular group can use. You can set the policy based on the identity. Used. That's exactly right. You can also extract accounting information on the usage of the cloud on a per group basis or even on a per user basis, saying this particular user or this particular group, how much of cloud resource did, did they use in a given time window? Uh, it could be virtual machine resources, like how many VMs, for how long did these VMs run, uh, what types of VMs were they, and EBS storage, how big were these storages, for how long did they use these storage, and so on and so forth. And you can extract this re reporting information in multiple formats, like PDF, or a CSV file, right. or an XML, or an HTML, and feed it into your you know, chargeback or billing model. As an administrator, you'll also be able to configure the cloud, like the cloud configuration, the, where the cloud controller is, what the DNS configuration is, your Walrus, which is equivalent to Amazon's S S3, wh what kind of storage is it using? And you can also set certain quotas on, on a per user basis on how big the bucket should be, how many buckets a user can use, and so on and so forth. You can also manage your clusters. You can have Zen cluster, a KVM cluster, a VMware cluster, all under the same cloud. And as an administrator, you'll be able to specify the virtual machine types. So M1.small in this case is a single CPU with 128 MB RAM and 2 gig disk drive, but you can modify these values. So that was an administrative uh, view of uh, the cloud.